Xiaomi Redmi Note 3 Pro is finally in my hands for a review. In this particular review I will focus on differences between normal Note 3 with Mediatek chipset and Note 3 Pro with Snapdragon chipset. Let's start with box content. It is a usual Xiaomi style packaging which I really like. It is simple and it looks great. In package you can find a micro USB cable for charging and synchronization. Also there is a wall charger with two amperes output. Redmi Note 3 Pro specifications are pretty good and major difference between Pro and non-Pro versions are better chipset and a bit better camera. So we are looking at Snapdragon 650 chipset with hexa-core processor. It is separated in two groups. First group is a quad-core 1.4 GHz and second group is a dual-core 1.8 GHz. Graphics are Adreno 510, 3 GB of RAM with 32 GB of internal storage, 16 MP f2 back camera, battery size is 4000 mAh and on top of all that is Android OS 5.1 with Mi UI 7. When you have a Note 3 Pro in the hands, it is impossible to skip talking about design and build. It is nearly full metal build, every part of the phone screams premium. Everything feels solid and really well put together. On the top part of the front side you will find the in-call speakerphone which is loud and clear. LED notification light, proximity and ambient light sensor are also present. Front facing camera is 5 megapixels f2 and it is pretty good in daylight. Even in low light you will get pretty good photos. A front facing camera video test with sound. I hope you enjoy it. On the bottom there are three capacitive touch buttons. They have a backlight, which is always a plus. Feedback from them is good, it is soft and not at all disturbing. 5.5 inch screen with 1080p resolution and 401 ppi pixel density will ensure excellent user experience. Color representation is good and backlight bleed is minimal. Viewing angles are also pretty good. Outdoor performance is decent, not the best, but pretty fine. You won't have any problems using Note 3 Pro outdoors. On the right hand side there are sleep wake, power on off and volume up and down buttons. They are made of metal and feel solid with great click feedback. Looking at left hand side there is just a SIM tray slot, which can accept one micro SIM card and one nano SIM card, which makes it dual SIM standby device. In slot 2 you can place a micro SD instead of nano SIM, in that way you can expand a 32GB internal storage. On the top of device we have a microphone. 3.5 mm jack and infrared blaster, which performs excellent with any app from the Play Store. You can start using Note 3 as a remote control for your household devices. On the bottom there is a in-call microphone with micro USB port for charging and synchronization. Backside is eye-catching. It is really something that leaves impression either when you watch it or when you hold it in the hand. Metal finish is impressive, really hands down for Xiaomi. One thing to note is that top and bottom part are made of plastic, which doesn't ruin a feel and it helps device to have a better wireless reception. On the top part of back side there is a 16 megapixel f2 lens camera, combined with a dual LED flashlight. Camera performs really good. Colors are great and with a lot of fine details in images. Overall, pictures taken are in pair with a lot more expensive devices. In image samples you can see that the dual LED flash performs pretty fine. If we compare pictures with non-Snapdragon Note 3, I would say that pictures look a bit better on Note 3 Pro. 
Maybe it is overall feel because of higher resolution and more details in images. Video quality is fine, but in long term I think that Xiaomi need to improve it a bit. I don't say that it is bad, but I say that it can be better. Fingerprint scanner is a top-notch performer, as it was in Note 3. It is fast, accurate and it is really hard to make it miss a scan. Overall my opinion is that this is one of the best fingerprint scanners on China brand phones. It is really a huge pleasure to use it. Let's forget a bit on hardware and let's focus on Android experience. It would be stupid to use too much philosophy here. Android 5.1 with MIUI 7 works great on Redmi Note 3 Pro. OS performs snappy and fluently. Really great user experience. In general, MIUI 7 is copying iOS design philosophy, but in the good way. There is also a lot of in-system implementations which improves general Android experience. Overall, MIUI 7 is a really good and one of the rare Android customizations which actually improve a stock Android experience. Benchmark results are brightest side of this device and Qualcomm Snapdragon 650 is to blame for that. N22 and Geekbench show the power of Snapdragon 650 which is quite nice. Gaming experience is logical if you consider benchmark results. Games run fluently and even most demanding games will run pretty fine with no major frame drops. And what about battery life? I will tell you, it is impressive. It feels like a few steps up from MediaTek Note 3. Maybe it is just ROM optimization or Snapdragon have a better power consumption. I can conclude that Xiaomi Redmi Note 3 Pro is one complete device. And we already know that. But is the extra money worth it to get Pro version? From my point of view, definitely yes. The price difference is not that huge and you will get definitely more with adding that extra money in Snapdragon version. But if you already have a MediaTek Note 3, there is no need to upgrade. All telephony features performed really well and extra functionality from Mi UI 7 adds that extra layer of satisfaction. Xiaomi needs to be example to other China brands to follow these steps how products should look, hardware and software working in harmony, giving you that great feel that you got much more for money you paid. At least that kind of satisfaction I like the most. Really great build quality which you immediately feel on touch and then that feel gets transferred in satisfaction when you use it. What I maybe miss? Well, Wireless charging will be a nice touch, but overall I can't say anything bad for this device. I got Xiaomi Redmi Note 3 Pro from Gearbest. There are links in description so you can check it out if you are interested. In the end of this review, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, see ya!